Hey everyone, my name is Randy Lee and I'm an environmental engineer and hopefully soon to be professional engineer because I just recently took my California seismic exam this past weekend. I haven't gotten the results yet but I am somewhat confident that I passed the first time. So in this video I'll be reviewing the Advanced Engineering Institute or AEI from now on 2025 on-demand prep course. I registered for the 180 day subscription option. What this means is that I purchased that subscription which lasts for 180 days from the start of the first day of purchase. And it includes pre-recorded videos of him lecturing on his live demand option. But for this on-demand option, instead of being there listening to him live in person on a Saturday, all at once for like a whole eight hours, you can study at your own pace. And I found this to be like the best option for me just because, you know, life happens. And I'd rather study step by step, slowly at my own pace, rather than cram like three chapters all on one Saturday for whole eight hour chunk. So I'll go over what AEI has to offer with my unbiased opinion, the pros and cons, and compare it with the other heavily mentioned Heiner prep course. Both websites and details will be in my video description down below. Also FYI, I am not affiliated with them or sponsored or will be receiving any sort of money in any way just reviewing them. I don't think even the professor knows who I am because I just sort of blended in with background. I bought the subscription, never really talked to him, just studied at my own pace. So if you're watching professor, hello, thank you for making the course. I found it really helpful, but I'll still be giving my honest review of your prep course. And lastly, I'll go over how to prepare for this exam and what I did for this California specific seismic exam using this prep course as my tool. First, let's start from the beginning. I bought the subscription near the beginning of May 2025. My exam was on August 30. So all in all, it took about four months from start to finish. Again, I purchased the on-demand subscription for 180 days. This equals to about six months worth of availability and access to their website. The purchase cost me $590 at the time of purchase on May 2025. You will receive two books in the mail when you buy this option. And I have it right here. The first book is this giant lecture book. And the other one is this practice exam booklet, which contains about three total fully length exams. This lecture book contains 14 total chapters. Some are lengthier than others. Also, it contains very long detailed practice problems. So imagine like one question that takes about to maybe 10 minutes to solve and lots of other smaller, simpler, multiple choice questions at the end of each chapter. Now let's talk about the website. On the website, you have access to these pre-recorded video lectures. So it's best to have your book open at the same time as you're watching these video lectures. You can just highlight and write down things on this book or you know separately if you want to, just make things neater as he explains these concepts. Also on the website are these PDF handouts that you need to have printed out as reference. This is basically the most important thing you need. These handouts and preferences and this whole master cheat sheet that he has already compiled for you. And you don't need anything else besides that. So don't go and buy reference materials from like ASCE or NCES or anything like that. I know they sort of advertise to buy that, but just save your money. Don't buy any of that. The professor already does all that for you. He summarized everything for you. Now all you need to do is buy this one prep course and everything that you need really goes into that one purchase. So again, don't buy anything else. All right, now that you know what you get after purchasing one of these sessions, here's what I did to get the most out of this prep course. So there are about 70 videos in total. Some videos can range from 30 minutes to up to three hours, but normally it's about like one hour per video lecture. The three hour videos is just him going over like a review questions in like full detail. So that's not really the norm. Also, just a quick heads up, the professor does have an accent. So if you have difficulty understanding or do you think that could affect your studies, just be aware of that. To me, it's not so distracting because I've had like way worse in college. So what I did was I watched one video a day, which is equivalent to one hour of video lecture a day. Assuming you do the same thing, that means in one month, you should expect to watch like 30 videos. That means after 70 videos, 70 days have passed, meaning more than two months have passed. And you know, sometimes life happens where you might miss a video lecture. So do prepare to just adjust accordingly. Overall, I would give myself three whole months which is equal to 90 days 
to take your time and fully digest and watch every single lecture as well as answer the questions. I know some people are much faster and they watch at like 1.5 times speed or some people they might even watch like two or three videos a lecture each day. Some people might just understand the material better so they might skip certain sections. In the end you do what's best for you but for complete beginners like me who have no background or just like super slow learners this is what I recommend. Take your time watching these videos because he says things that are not always in the cheat sheet and you'll want to add that in. So that's sort of a small negative on my part because he doesn't include some of these things that he says into the cheat sheet. But then again, I'm mean, understandable. Once you see the cheat sheet, it's quite lengthy and he doesn't have time to like add in everything and just you know, perfect everything. So that's where you come in and you have to like fine tune and write down what you think is necessary for you to pass. In my case, I added minor notes here and there and just tabs to every single page of the cheat sheet. And then after that cheat sheet, I even included two extra pages to was already like very lengthy cheat sheet and that did end up helping me in the actual exam. So in the end you'll have his notes plus your extra fine-tuned detailed notes just to add in, just to compile everything all together. After finishing all the video lectures, three months have passed. I know at this point you're dead, you're exhausted at this point and I know you're burnt out but yeah I mean you gotta stay positive, you gotta stay motivated. At this point I did give myself one full month just to do package problems. The lectures there, like, they're helpful in, in understanding the concept, but I mean, if I want to be real with you, I cannot tell you the why to some of these questions. Like, I don't know or care or probably don't find any interest in what or why, for example, wood shear panels and nails have to be a certain distance from each other. I can only give you the correct answer to that question. So this exam overall is probably 60% technical knowledge and the other 40% really falls into how good of a test taker are you really? As you're watching the lecture videos, there's some practice problems after each chapter and I assume that you have followed along with him and followed his recommended schedule. So that's why I think you might take more than 70 days just to complete this. You have to stop, take time to do the practice problems, just to familiarize yourself with the material before you move on to the next chapter. At this point, after watching all the lectures and seeing how they'd ask the problems, you're gonna take this one whole month to do them all again. So go back from the beginning, quickly skim the concept from the beginning of the chapter, and redo all the fully detailed, long practice problems. Do maybe like one chapter a day, since you know problems should only take maybe about, at most, 10 minutes to complete. So you're already used to spending like one hour a day just to study, so you might as well just do that instead. Once you finish all the full examples and practice problems in the lecture book, now you can move on to this practice exam booklet which contains the three mini mock exams. The professor has his recommendations on how you should approach this because time management is really an issue. You are given two and a half hours to complete the exam and with 55 multiple choice questions, that roughly equates to three, two to three minutes per question. Some questions are short and could take maybe just 30 seconds to complete. And some can take up to five to six minutes if you aren't careful. So be very cautious of your time. My recommendation is every 10 questions, should take only 25 to 30 minutes. To be on the safe side, have a 25 minute alarm and answer just 10 questions. See if you can follow within that range because the actual exam can really ruin you if you aren't careful. So for me, instead of sitting down and taking the full two and a half hours and answering all 55 questions, what I did was I split that up. I did the method where I only gave myself 25 minutes exactly to answer only 10 questions exactly. On my actual exam, when I followed this guideline, I was left with 30 minutes after completing everything, which really helped me take it easy on the five questions that I had to guess at the very beginning. So just start that time management discipline early on. Overall, my average scores on these practice exams were about 37 out of 55, which equates to 67%. I don't know what the pass rate is for this exam because it's not given, but it probably fluctuates between 50% to 70%. So if you're scoring within this range, you're doing pretty well, maybe a little above average, but I think 50% is the borderline like gray area where you should start to worry about it. It's a good start, but you don't want to stay within that 50% range, aim for like 70%. Now, comparing AEI and Heiner. So I have a coworker who took Heiner's course back in maybe 2019, so a good five to six years from the time of this recording. I have a lecture book and I read through all of it. 
the concept and formulas are all the same. The only difference is that you might have some chapters switched around and maybe, for example, some information in chapter 7 of AEI is in chapter 9 of Heiner. There are very minor differences, but it's the same concept and formulas used throughout the whole book. The biggest difference that I noticed were the length and difficulty of Heiner's practice problems to AEI. AEI, for example, was much more difficult and lengthy. So those practice problems at the end of each chapter in his book, they're painfully like overkilling the problem. But in a way, I am thankful that you made it that way because since you started timing yourself and giving yourself just like 25 minutes to finish those 10 questions, styled his way, you're already building very good time management skills and like very good discipline just answering all those questions. Heiner's problems were very straightforward and gives you most of the necessary information in the questions, but on the actual California Statistics exam, it's more closely related to Heiner's format, meaning they already tell you the specific information that you need to know, so that skips a lot of the steps. Just depending on how you interpret this, I'd rather know the ins and outs of each question and be relieved to know that you don't have to do these things during the actual exam, so like you're not going to be surprised and be stuck in one problem. So my honest review is that AEI is a good and reputable prep course. I highly recommend that you do take this just so you can over prepare yourself for this. I don't really have any negatives on AEI besides the fact that the lecture videos are just very lengthy. So if you're trying to pass as quickly as possible, I might actually recommend that you go with Heiner instead. However, since I did not take Heiner's course, I don't know his teaching style and I don't know how he explains things. I just like the fact that I was heavily overprepared to take the actual exam and after leaving the exam I felt confident rather than like depressed or anxiously confused. I didn't feel like I needed to sit and sulk and think about the shoulda, coulda, woulda because I felt very prepared going in. In the end I flagged about 12 questions after leaving so if I assume that I got all 12 wrong out of the whole 55 questions that means I got like a 43 out of 55 which equals 78% and that's way above the pass rate assuming it's like 70%. Now here are some general tips for the exam. First is the day before the exam, don't stress or study too much. At this point you either know it or you don't. Don't go into the exam hating it or being angry or stressed. You don't want to be negative and get those like angry emotions in the way in your decision making. You want to be calm and motivated to beat the exam rather than stressed and burnt out. Next is get a good night's rest and sleep early. Don't eat anything that could upset your stomach if you're getting like test anxiety. You know mental preparation is good but plan for the unexpected and like just the minor details in life that could possibly interfere on the actual day of your exam. So for example like leave for the test center early because you'll never know like if there's going to be some car accident in the freeway that might make you late or just something like that, you know, just common sense actions that won't cause any hiccups prior to your test. Third, and the most important tip is really this one, the goal of this exam is not to solve each question. The goal is to just find the correct answer. Meaning, if you could eliminate some answer choices using like common sense or obvious cues, you are statistically increasing your chances of choosing the correct answer. Some answers might be like a few decimal points off from what you calculated, and some formulas on the cheat sheet might be using some variable that has like a numbering of two decimal points. Some of that doesn't even matter. Like if pi is 3.14, just say pi is like three for all I care. You don't need to be perfectly exact in finding the correct answer because you will run out of time. Fourth is make sure you continue to keep track of time. A good rule of thumb again is for every 10 questions, it should only take 25 minutes. 30 minutes for each 10 questions is sort of the long end and you're sort of pushing it, you'll run out of time if you keep that method. And lastly is prepare to fail. I know this doesn't really sound very optimistic, but even I plan for the worst. Since you're only able to take this exam every quarter, which is every three months, and I took this exam on August, I should expect to hear back sometime by mid-September. If I failed and I found out on September, that means the next available time I can take this exam is from October, November, December. So immediately, I would take the first available time starting October and you want to plan for this failure because the next time you could take the immediate exam you don't want to wait like three months and have all that knowledge slowly fade as you know time progresses and as you wait. 
Okay, so that's it. Those are all my tips, tricks, and my personal experience on this California status exam. Be wary of when I made this video because things could change in the future. I hope this helps anyone who's searching for this in more recent times because not many people do search for this. And if they do search for this on YouTube, it's a bit outdated. So that's all I have for this video. Let me know if you have any questions. That's it. Goodbye.